Hey losers, I'm Coral. I am here today with the books that I managed to read in May. I really thought I would get more reading done. Uh, and I didn't, and that's okay. It's just the way it is. And I <laughs> have to chill. I have to chill, I have to be able to chill. Getting into my stats for the month, uh, in total, I read eight books this month, which totaled 2,340 pages, which is about 78 pages per day. The genres I read were a horror, uh, two horror books, one nonfiction, one paranormal, three science fiction books, and a fantasy. The oldest book I read this year was published in 1986. Then I jumped to 2012, 2013, 2014. 2018, two books published in 2021, and then a new release that came out this year. Okay, so um, in addition to the eight books I read this month, I also kind of want to talk about two that I finished at the very end of last month that didn't make it into my wrap up because I had a film, um, I had a film earlier than like the very, very end of the month. So the first of those two books is Cold Moon Over Babylon by Michael McDowell. This came out in 1980 and this is like a Southern Gothic revenge story and it was ooky spooky for sure. This starts out and there is a young girl named Margaret Larkin who is really close with her family and she goes missing. It's terrible. Uh, she lives with her older brother and her grandmother. Her parents had died some years earlier in another like kind of strange accident. And so it's like, you know, this family doesn't need any more trouble. And yet here it is. So it is a revenge story uh, perpetrated by a ghost and it is just very character focused. We do spend some time with the murder in this as well, which I really thought was um, interesting. And they're just like a piece of shit. And it was fun to read about this piece of shit. I don't know, I like that. I, I really love a good villain. So this was excellent and I wanted to tell you about it. The other book was actually an arc that I had that was Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman, which came out some months ago. And I was just like really uh, late on getting that read. That actually came out last year in September when I was starting to have a really hard time reading at that uh, point. So it just kind of got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, but I read it. And this is another one that like could be Southern gothic -y, I think. It's just um, got like this oppressive atmosphere throughout the whole book. This is about a woman named, shoot, Erin, a woman named Erin who's had this on again, off again boyfriend um, in her young adult years named Silas. And at the very beginning of the book, he shows back up in her life. He uh, was sp supposed to be spending some time in rehab and he leaves rehab, but she gives him an ultimatum. Like you cannot be staying with me if you're still using, which he seems to be. And uh, the next day he's found dead um, seemingly died by suicide. And so Erin is very upset about this because she feels just like a boundless amount of guilt over how it happened and, you know, still having feelings about him and stuff like that. Uh, but he talks about this drug and one of their other friends, um, that they were close to, his name is Toby. And he like shows Erin this drug and it allows you to see the ghosts of the people you loved. So she is taking this to see Silas and it goes in a strange direction for sure. Very oppressive, uh, made me anxious when I was reading it. And okay, I wanna talk about this because I feel like it was such a really cool part of the book, but it is mildly spoilery. So um, let's see, I will hold up my little notebook here and tell, while I'm talking with this and then I'll put it down again when I'm done um, in case you wanna skip over this. So hopefully that gave you time to skip forward if you needed to, <laughs> cause I'm gonna talk about it now, okay. But there are mushrooms in the, drugs that they're taking and just I think 
Okay, I, I like to take mushrooms sometimes. And it's like the more I take them, the more like my body wants to rebel when I am like actually eating them, you know what I mean? Um, it's like, I don't know, I assume that it's kind of this lizard brain thing of like, oh, we shouldn't be eating this, but it's like, listen, I'm okay, I'm safe. I, I kind of know what I'm doing, right? But um, the parts of that when they're talking about uh, like this weird ectoplasm that they start vomiting up and stuff like that, uh, it's like, Ugh, like I could just feel that it was giving me like the before when I know I'm gonna eat mushrooms like weird stomach feeling where my stomach's like I you shouldn't be doing this and I'm like shut up nerd and I do it anyways but it's like uh it's just it was triggering that feeling in my stomach it was making me feel like icky and anxious and I was like Ugh. okay okay so I just thought that was a really interesting experience like a feeling, a physical feeling from reading a book, you know what I mean? So, spoilers done. Um, really liked that book. And then, okay, now I should get on to the other books that I read this month. I'd like to talk about um, the one that I had rented from the library before I forget, since I don't have it in front of me. This was City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I actually um, borrowed this to read to my daughter. I believe this was published in 2018. It's about this like middle school age girl. So this is like middle grade paranormal type of stuff. And her name is Cassidy Blake and her parents uh, do TV stuff like paranormal ghost. It's not quite like ghost hunters or something like that, but they do explore like haunted places, right? That's their thing. And Cassidy herself had a near death experience and she was saved by a ghost. So now she has like her friend Jacob, who is like her ghost companion and nobody else can see him. At least like nobody that can't see ghosts can see him. And so she has this special thing where she can go into like, she calls it the veil, which is like, I don't know. I would as assume it's something kind of like limbo where these spirits are trapped on earth and they can't pass on, but they have their own like ghost dimension almost. So they travel to Scotland to do something with her parents' careers and she, ends up, um, she ends up f seeing this woman in the veil and she doesn't seem like a regular ghost and there's kind of this legend behind this woman. And so like, that's the point of the story, right? Is like figuring out how to stop this ghost from doing bad things to children. So I don't know, the plot was just fine. What I thought, what I thought was just absolutely so irritating though is like, 90% of this girl's personality was that she liked Harry Potter and it's like, oh my God, we get it. <laughs> we get it. Everybody fucking loves Harry Potter. I'm just so fucking, like, why is that part of, why is that part of this? Like, you, there couldn't be anything more interesting about her? Uh, so, I don't know. It was kind of redundant and irritating. It was like every chapter there's something like Harry Potter, uh, you know, being brought up and mentioned and it was just like, oh my God. As a parent reading a middle grade book to my child, there are middle grade books that I've really liked and this wasn't one of them. I don't think she was like super impressed by it either, you know, but I don't know. I am an adult reading a book meant for children. So take that with a grain of salt, of course. So next, I read Necroscope by Brian Lumley. This was published in 1986 and this is a first look at this great step back art. This is about um, Harry Keough, who is something called a necroscope. But this book starts out, and I thought like we would go into this with Harry as an adult and he's doing shit. But this really starts out like with Harry's childhood and how he realizes that he is this necroscope thing and how he trains to be this because he eventually has to go after um, this man named Boris Dragosani, who is being kind of groomed to be a vampire progeny by this ancient vampiri who is 
trapped underground. He, he was like bound by silver and buried alive, but he's, you know, a vampire. So he is still alive. And, um, this vampire has been grooming Boris because Boris has the ability to rifle through dead things and like kind of consume all their knowledge basically. And Harry Keogh has something similar, although like less invasive where he can just speak to ghosts, right? Uh, so he doesn't have to like steal from them or take things that they aren't willing to give like Dragosani can. And so it ends up being like this Soviet versus um, man from the UK kind of thing where uh, they are trying to learn these secrets and um, basically Harry though, he's just really trying to stop Dragosani and uh, you know, because he's becoming a vampire and he'll be able to rule the world or I don't know, rule the Soviets, stuff like that. So it, a lot of espionage stuff, which, which, you know, I didn't, I could have guessed, I guess, from the synopsis, but I didn't even really think about it when picking it up. But, you know, that was something that I thought would be more boring than I thought it was. Like, I, I didn't think it was that boring. It, um, the story is told well, and it is really long. It goes through a lot of Harry Keogh's life and uh, Boris Dragosani's as well. So, like, we have this whole, like, giant this is like all character building. You know what I mean? Like this entire book is basically character building on these two characters, which made it like pretty good because it's like, I understand these people. I understand their motives. I understand what's going on. And I think like for sure, I'll continue with the second book eventually. Um, and I liked Necroscope. Okay, next on my pile is Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I'm in the process of finishing up the, the vlog I did reading this. So I'm not really going to say anything about this here. Uh, this is a new release released in 2023 and it is a whimsical fantasy and I thought it was just okay. And um, if you wanna know more, watch my vlog when I get it up. I also read Girly Drinks by Mallory O'Meara this month. This is a nonfiction book about the history of women and alcohol. Uh, this goes back as far as we can go back, you know what I mean? And it really, speaks a lot on how the alcohol industry, uh, I think despite the way a lot of us see it, it was an, a women's industry for centuries, like centuries, uh, until it wasn't anymore, right? And now, um, you know, more women are getting involved in it again. And it's just really, really great. It goes through history, it goes through historical figures, um, you know, Cleopatra, Ada Coleman, Sunny Sund, Lucha Reyes, Catherine the Great. I don't know, just so many, so many people um, who were instrumental in the history of beer, alcohol, cocktails, like wine. I mean, you're talking about like the widow Clicquot and, and things like that, which is, I actually read a biography on her once and it was really good. So, um, this was great. Uh, I love this. I think that this is, I mean, it's obviously it's centered around women. So it is feminist and it talks about, I mean, the way fucking things were, which like some people, some people don't want to see it that way, but it is the fucking way it is. You know, uh, men historically have tried to keep women in the house being mothers and being wives. And uh, that's not what we all want to fucking do. So this is about that too. It's a, it's a lot about that. So um, don't go into this thinking that that's not that because it is. And it was great. Um, I love the way this was written. It was, the narrative is so interesting. It was not for one second like a dry nonfiction. It was so good. And if you like alcohol and if you like women, I would say you should pick it up. Okay, next I have Left to You by Daniel J. Volpe. This was also released in 2021. And this is a horror book with like uh, World War II stuff and kind of like Faustian bargains. And I feel like 
probably I shouldn't say too much about this, but this is about a young man named Robert and his mother is like on her deathbed. She has cancer and um, Robert in his day job has kind of struck up just kind of an acquaintanceship with a older man, Mr. Lazerowitz, I think his last name was, he calls him Mr. Laser, but um, Mr. Laser invites Robert over to tell him a little bit about his time in World War II. And Robert assumes that maybe Yosef was a child, Mr. Laser was a child uh, when this happens, but he finds out that that's not the case. And Yosef has a lot of things to tell Robert about, including something that might save his mother's life. Uh, it started out kind of clunky, okay? Like the writing, it's like, all right, this person's kind of trying to find their way, which like is fine. The author is trying to find their way, which is fine. Everyone has to start somewhere, right? And I was really concerned that that would carry through the novel. Luckily, I didn't feel like it did. Once we got to Yosef's time in Auschwitz of like, especially, I found this to be really interesting. Uh, but that is just a portion of the book. And once we were back uh, with Robert and his life, um, not that I was disinterested, but I didn't think that that was the most interesting part of the novel, unfortunately. I did think that like Yosef's secret for Ro Robert was really interesting. And you know, I kind of liked the ending pretty well. I mean, that's really it. I don't want to give too much away. I do think this is worth re reading. I really liked it actually like more than I expected to. Um, so, I would for sure recommend this. And then I ended up reading, <laughs> I thought I was gonna get through 10 volumes of Saga this month. I read three, which is fine. I, so I reread volumes one, two, and three of Saga by Michael K. Vaughn, or sorry, Brian K. Vaughn and uh, Fiona Staples. This is a sci-fi fantasy story about um, a universe that has been warring with each other for decades. It really starts out on this planet, um, this planet warring with its moon and um, everyone else was being forced to pick sides basically and a, a woman from the planet falls in love with a captive from the moon and they both defect from their armies and have a child which like everyone wants to make sure that basically no one knows about this shit. The governments don't want even to, they really don't want people to know that they can breed together. You know what I mean? Because uh, when you see someone as like a completely different species as you, it is kind of easy to dehumanize them, I'm assuming. So uh, if people knew like, we're not that different, we can make things work. Like maybe uh, we wouldn't be having this war so much, but, um, you know, this is just, this is their story and I love this so much. I can't wait to read more of it. I'm so glad I at least started um, my reread of the series and um, hopefully I'll read some more next month. They are just so, I mean, they're not always lighthearted, but I think it does a good job of like putting these kind of crazy space oddities in these stories to make it like kind of whimsy, like funny and weird, but also like serious. So I would also recommend you read Saga too. Anyway, uh, those are the books that I read this month and a few that I read last month. Uh, I'd love to know if you've read any of these and what you thought about them. And I think that's it for this video. So thank you for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.